Hello again and welcome back to another one and today we have a couple of topics to cover as we recently got to hear from Juvenile and Manny Fresh we got to hear their thoughts on Eminem sampling Ha on Road Rage and we'll expand on this in a bit and explore some reactions. Today we also have one on a message from Martha Stewart to Eminem that she sent via Snoop Dogg in a recent interview and if I recall this isn't the first time she sent a message to Eminem but perhaps since Snoop Dogg and Eminem are cool right now it shouldn't be long before Eminem ends up on her show or something and we'll expand on this in a bit. Today we also have more that continues the conversation on Kendrick Lamar versus Drake and we got to hear from LL Cool J who revealed some of the funniest moments from the battle in his opinion and he used the moment to expand on why it is important to pay attention to what's going on from the younger generation of rappers and speaking on the battle since Kendrick rapped on Euphoria Am I battling ghost or AI? Dude feeling like Joel Osteen. Funny, he was in a film called AI and my sixth sense telling me to off him. Well, AP met up with Haley Joel Osment about these bars and he shared his thoughts on if he believes Kendrick mixed up his name with Joel Osteen and we'll expand on this in a bit. And before we get started, apparently according to Chopmaster's global estimates, Eminem has now moved the equivalent of 10 million albums globally in 2024 off music streaming alone. And it would be interesting to see how it turns out overall in 2024 for Eminem when IFBI's official reports release in early 2025. And if you don't know, even without an album in 2021, 22 and 23, Eminem maintained his position in the 2020s decade as the second biggest rapper behind Drake according to IFBI reports. And starting with Snoop Dogg, Martha Stewart wants Snoop Dogg to arrange a meeting with Eminem and from Access Hollywood, check out a snippet. Do you remember the first time you met, your first impressions of one yeah, another? Yeah, he was on my show long time ago making brownies he made brownies <laughs> <It's> <laughs> like, special grassy brownies <laughs> <laughs> on tv yeah but i wanted to be on her show is I that was right and yes it was one of those fan out moments where i want to be on your show and she welcomed and me and i show. wanted rappers on my show because yes. nobody was having rappers yes. on daytime tv yes. yes so i had him i tried to get eminem on and i still have not met eminem in person that's my job I'm that is your eminem. job i have to meet him wait wait you're gonna call eminem I'm gonna bring he's, him. He's in best it. friends with Eminem. I know that's I'm not right. gonna call him. I'm going to bring him. Remember See? the Super Bowl? Yeah, yeah I remember yeah, the Super yeah, Bowl. Yeah, yeah. And there was somebody. I know it was him. And I was supposed to meet him then, and I didn't get down there in time. And they was moving people around so fast. That was the fastest 13 minutes of my it life. It was so fast. <laughs> and I do remember seeing you. I do remember seeing you. You were on the move. Oh yeah. And perhaps now that Eminem's launched Mom Spaghetti, they've got a great excuse to make that happen on the show. Especially now that Snoop's Olympics coverage is over. It shouldn't be a problem. And just so you know, Snoop continues his trend of being everywhere, getting the bag, as he was reportedly receiving half a million dollars a day plus expenses for his Olympics coverage with NBC. Damn! And moving on, AP Entertainment caught up with the Sixth Sense actor who was name dropped on Euphoria and he was asked about his thoughts on the song and this was how it went. Haley Joel Osment doesn't think Kendrick Lamar made a mistake in the Drake this song Euphoria which conflated his name with the pastor Joel Osteen. The star of The Sixth Sense and AI appears next in Blink Twice. And I'm dying to ask if you've been following the like online conversation about the Kendrick Drake. Yeah, just a little bit. It's it's getting in, it's in my text inbox that's for sure. I was shooting in Ireland when all that happened and I got like a hundred texts in the middle of the night and I was like what is going on? <laughs> Do you think it was intentional or did he mess up your <laughs> I think he's too precise. I mean I don't know for sure and I'm, I'm not gonna uh, assume that he you know knows my exact name but the way I've heard people talk about that and certain analysis that I've read about it, I think that it's an intentional scrambling of my name and that other guy's name because Kendrick's too precise to just make a mistake like that, I think. <laughs> and this continues to spark split reactions as there are those who believe, I thought this was obvious, do people really think he made a mistake? The whole bar was about who he's battling and well, that's insane to think otherwise. And then there are those who believe holy glaze laughing my bum off, Kendrick is just a dumb bum. And then there's this, he put both of the names together because Joel Osteen didn't write his own sermons, he had ghostwriters, 
So that and the AI and Sixth Sense bars are all on purpose. But what are your thoughts? Where do you stand? And speaking on the battle between Kendrick and Drake, LL Cool J spoke about the importance of small details, like even the cover of Not Like Us, that he found extremely hilarious. And he used this as a moment to expand on the importance of legacy artists keeping their ears to the ground. Check out a snippet of his breakdown from Ray Daniels Media. It just cracks me up that Kendrick put all them signs on homies' house. Yes. Like, like this shit is crazy. This <laughs> is like, this <laughs> ain't got nothing to do with nothing, but it's the funniest shit yes. in the world. Yes, yes, yes. Like, it's bananas. Like, that kind of thinking, you, like, you have to respect that. Like, you gotta say, well, this is a smart little motherfucker. This yeah. shit is crazy. Exactly. So they, they're thinking, it's the, the late, it's like this generation, they think on a, a much more multi-layered. The thinking is far more layered. Yeah. See, the thinking used to be, back in the days, you do the song, that was it. Yep. Then it transitioned to, you do the song and you do the video. Yep. Now it transitions to, you do the song, you do the video, you have a brand, you do a book, you have the movie, yeah. you have the music, yep. you monetize it, yep. you have a platform. Yep. You have, mm -hmm. like, the layering of the thought process is completely, completely different. Completely different. You'll have a girl on the corner, she'll do one bar with a mic hanging down, and God, she's starting a whole empire on for of that right there in her thinking right there right yep. so that's why it's very important for established artists to pay attention to the youth and pay attention to what mm -hmm. young artists how they're thinking and how they're approaching it however not everyone is a fan of ll cool j's take on the predator cover of not like us as some fight back with you have to respect an artist putting child predator allegations on another man. LL Cool J has been corny for the entirety of his album rollout. If someone did this ish to him, he wouldn't find it funny at all. Seems like he never liked Drake. But I think this had more to do with LL Cool J appreciating the small details, since this is a rap battle after all, where everyone was going in for the kill. I mean, Drake called Kendrick Lamar a wife beater but he failed to execute it well, and so it didn't stick, compared to the certified PDF file bars. Now, that failure is on Drake, because the wife beater allegations could have done some real damage if Drake had better execution. You can't blame LL Cool J for finding Kendrick's execution impressive. And yes, the debate continues, and we got one between Adam22 and Games Manager, WAC100. And this was about if Drake should plan to go head to head with Kendrick when he drops his next album. Check out a snippet from the No Jumper podcast. We both can agree. Kendrick won the, the, the battle. The battle. Sure. Okay. Yeah. If Drake finds out the date Kendrick's dropping and drops the same date and outruns Kendrick, where does that put this whole thing? Does it still leave it where it's at? To me, it would look thirsty as f if Drake did that. So it'll work against him. Like you're gonna rush your whole project out just to try to get this little W over this dude who realistically, yeah, he's not on your level sales wise or whatever. I think that would be a, an error on Drake's So you part. figure Drake should just stay in his lane? I don't think he should totally stay in his lane. I still think he kind of needs to like take shots at Kendrick. And I don't think he needs to do that. But he can't tuck that his tail. That looks thirsty. He, but he also shouldn't be like trying to engage in like silly little petty shenanigans. Also, what if Kendrick sells more? What if Kendrick gets hey, more listen, streams? Hey, it's listen. totally possible. Hey, listen, they definitely. Yeah. If, they, if they both do that, it's going to become a war of who could buy the most streams. Because the W is so important to either one's narrative that is there's no way they're not buying streams. But what are your thoughts on this idea? A head-to-head -head on release week between Drake and Kendrick. A move that will help both albums sell better. But who do you think will come out on top in this current climate? As some believe it is too biased to do this. Drake gains nothing from it. Big risk for nothing. Also, this would suck to turn hip-hop into stand culture, finessing views just to say your numbers are high. And I'm talking from both sides. And speaking on Drake gaining nothing from this, some have expanded. Kendrick would win because Drake hate is at an all-time high and all the casual fans and bandwagon fans that wanna appear cool would stream the F out of Kendrick. Kendrick for the first time in his career would sell a million first week Drake will do 600,000. Thoughts? And moving on, we got to hear from Manny Fresh and Juvenile about their thoughts on Eminem sampling Ha on Road Rage. 
Check out a snippet from DJ Drewski's podcast. And many artists. Yeah, Drake, from Drake to, to yeah. City Kanye. Girls. Yeah, they just used it. It's on Yay Shout stuff. out to Eminem, yeah. too. He just took some high. Huh. Like, yeah, Eminem like, just used high. Right. We can't do nothing with these songs sitting down. We can't make no money with these songs just <laughs> sitting down. So I, I, I applaud the artists, especially the artists that's real good at it. That got talent. Hey man, go take a sample. Take some of them. I am right. not tripping. I'm not one of those cats. And I love the, the new artists. I'm not hating on none of them. I think it's the biggest homage anybody could pay pay to you when it's you know like credible artists. Mm -hmm. When it's like wow, like you know when somebody like M used your song or J yeah. jumped on, huh? Right. That's like wow, like you know incredible because it's like if you sitting down in a barber shop and we talking, you can stick your chest out and be like, yeah, but right. did. Eminem ever rap on any of your beats? You know what I'm yeah. saying? You know what yeah. I'm saying? Did Jay ever rap on any of your beats? You yeah, know what right. I'm saying? Right. Did Cube ever Crazy. rap on any of your beats? You know what I'm saying? Any of the greats. <laughs> it's like I said, it's the biggest thing ever. Even when I heard that the Eminem song with Han, he did Juvie Flow. Oh, man. I was just like, oh, mm. shit. <laughs> M is my dude because okay. when, my, when my career started, M was one of them guys that kind of like reached out. He showed us love in the beginning. So, yeah, yeah he, he's my guy. But... Man, I didn't expect that. And this sparked reactions like, as a southern boy who listens to a ton of old southern rap, when I heard him do that on Road Rage, I got the biggest smile because I knew they'd love it. A southern boy listening to Eminem, but Hip Hop Head said, Impossible. Impossible! And over to you guys, share your thoughts below, thanks for watching and see you on the next one.